Hi, I am Selva. In this one, we will try to understand the concept behind Mahalanobis distance very clearly. So, we will first understand the concept crystal clear. Then we will see how to use Mahalanobis distance for outlier detection. All right. So, we know what outliers are. Any data point that is very different from the rest of the data, we typically call this as outliers. We have done a couple of videos before this one on outlier detection. So, we have seen two approaches for this. One is the box plot, box plot based approach. The second approach was the Z score, Z score based approach. I hope you have watched those videos. If you have not watched, I will leave a description in the in the in the description. You can see, you can go ahead and watch that also. Now we know these two approaches, right? Now the thing is, both of these approaches are sort of what you call as the univariate approach. For example, say you have a data set. You have a data set. You have a data set. You have a lot of columns here. I'll tell you what these columns are. Right? And each row in this data set represents the customer. Each row here represents the customer. Say this is customer 1, customer 2, so on and so forth till customer n. All right? N customers we have. And we have various data such as the credit score, credit score of the customer. Then we have say the age of the customer, the salary of the customer, various data, various data we have. Now both of these approaches, what they do is they look at one column at a time. It could be credit score, it could be age, whatever the column is. It looks at one column at a time and finds out what the extreme values are, either very large values or very small values amongst, amongst within credit score, within one particular column. All right. For that reason, since it is looking at one column at a time, for that reason, it is called as a univariate based approach. Now, nothing wrong with it. This, this gives us an intuition and idea about which of the data points are extreme values. All right. Nothing wrong with it. But what if instead of just looking at credit score, you want to look at the entire customer at a time. You want to know which of these customers are sort of extreme or very abnormal customers or anomalous customers. In order to understand that, you want to look at not just one single column, not just one single column, but collectively looking at the entire data set, taking all the data in, into consideration, which amongst my end customers are outliers. To answer this question, you need to look at all the columns, isn't it? For that reason, we call these approaches as multivariate outlier detection approach. We will see more approaches in the future also in the next upcoming videos. In this one, we will see a very powerful method, which is the Mahalanobis distance. All right, Mahalanobis distance takes all the data into consideration before, before marking them as outliers. So what is Mahalanobis distance? As the name suggests, as the name suggests, this is again a distance metric distance metric. For example, typically when we, what we call as distance is something called as the Euclidean distance. Say you have an X and you have a Y axis, all right, and you have two data points. Let me call this as A and this is B, all right. The coordinates of A, let's call it as X1 and coordinates of B is say X2 and A hits the Y axis at Y1 and B hits it at Y2. Right. So, we have two different data points. Now, to measure the distance between the, these two data points, the distance between A and B, you can call it as, you can measure it as the Euclidean distance. Let me write it here. Eu, Euclidean, Euclidean distance, Euclidean distance is measured as, I will call this as D. D is nothing but x1 minus x2 the whole square plus y1 minus y2 the whole square, take a whole root. This is what is called as Euclidean distance and it measures the distance between these two points. Now, if you have one more axis, let's say you have a third axis Z and this hits Z at Z1 and Z2, let's say, then you will just add that, that new axis component also here. So, Z1 minus Z2 the whole square, all right. And as many axis, imaginary axis, you can add also. So this is what Euclidean distance refers to. Now, the difference is, Mahalanobis distance is also a distance measure, and it differs from Euclidean distance, Euclidean distance in two ways. First is Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is a distance measure between a point and another point, a point and another point. All right. Whereas Mahalanobis distance. Mahalanobis distance is a distance between a point, point and a distribution, a point and a distribution which is a collection of points, collection of data points, alright. That is Mahalanobis distance. 
Now, so this is the first first difference. Now let's understand the second distance. Now, in order to understand that, you need to understand this distance, the distribution we are calling here, right? It can be represented as a data set, which is nothing but so say the customer data set that we just saw, right? Each of the rows in the data set can be considered as a point. Each of these rows here can be considered as a point, isn't it? Isn't it? Only that these points are multidimensional, all right? Now, before computing, the second difference is before computing the distance between say this point also here is also multidimensional. So, let's say you want to compute the distance between this, this point P1 and this entire distribution represented by this data set. If you want to compute this distance, first we will need to remove any correlation that exists within this data. So, say here this is column, let, let me call them as column, um, like, like okay, feature F1, feature F2, so on and so forth. There are multiple features here, right? Multiple features here. These features might be correlated amongst each other. We first remove those correlations and then compute the distance. All right, let's now try to understand why we do this. Why do we need to remove this correlation? Okay, so here, take this, you have a x axis and a y axis, and as x increases, y also increases. You can see from this data, isn't it? Now, here, take two points here. So, you have point 1 and point 2. Both of these points are equidistant from the centroid of this distribution. Both point 1 as well as point 2 are equidistant. But you can definitely say that point 1 is a member of this distribution whereas point 2 is not. Why is that? Because, because there is existing correlation as x increases y also increases. Because of this correlation here, because this is correlated, only if you visually see this you can tell which is a member. All right? The distance matrix say this is d1, d2, even though d1 and d2 are the same, you cannot use this distance metric to tell if these points are member of the distribution or not. To make, that to make that decision, you need to remove the correlation. Any correlation that exists in the data, you remove the correlation. Now compute the, now compute the distance. Okay, these, these two points are not the same by the way. Typically, like here it is larger distance, right? Typically, the point 2 might come over here, might come outside this. All right, so suppose if this was the case, and you say that point 1 and point 2 are equidistant, then we can say both of them are member of this distribution. Right? But if there is a point P3 here, which is far away from here, from far away from this, then in this case, P3 is not a member because now since it is this distribution, this correlation is gone, you can use this distance metric as a representative to make a decision on whether it is a member or not. All right. So now, hope this, this idea is clear. Why we are removing the correlation, the idea is clear, I hope. All right. Now, with that context, let us try to understand the formula behind Mahalanobis distance. So, this is the formula might look intimidating at first, I will simplify this for you. So, what this says is the square of the Mahalanobis distance here is x minus m c inverse which is the correlation matrix, I will come to I will come to that, dot another dot product of x minus m. So, what is x, m and c? You have the data set here, right? I will have to draw this one more time, one last time I hope. So, we have this data set, we have this data set, all right. Now, we, we want to co compute the distance between this point, this point x, this point x and this data set and this data set. So, what we first do is we take the mean of all the rows present in this data set. We compute the mean, all right? we compute the mean and store it here all right? and x we have here, we have here. Both of them are having the same dimension by the way, same number of columns. Now, we, once you compute the mean. Once you compute the mean, you have a multidimensional vector. This is a representative of this entire data and we are computing the mean. So, this is like the centroid that we saw in the previous picture, all right. So, this vector here represents m in this formula, all right. And this vector x is this x in this formula, yeah. And c here is the covariance matrix of this data set. Covariance matrix, it will contain as many rows and columns as there are rows here in this data, as there are columns here in this data set. All right. This is very similar to the correlation. In statistics, in statistics, we have correlation, right? Correlation will, will range between minus 1 to plus 1, right? And the more closer, so two, two, two columns here, you can compute the correlation between these two columns. It can vary between minus 1 to plus 1. If the 
correlation value is closer to plus 1 or minus 1, there is a significant and strong relationship between these two variables. If it is closer to plus 1, it is having a strong positive relationship which means when one variable increases, the other one also increases. If it is closer to minus 1, when, when one variable decreases, the other one also decreases, the other one increases in the opposite direction. If it is closer to 0, there is no relationship. It may or it may not increase. They, these two variables are not related. That is what correlation is. Covariance matrix is very similar to correlation, only that its values are not limited between minus 1 and plus 1. Getting me? That is covariance matrix. Now, to, to understand this formula or to remember this formula, this is very similar to the Z score formula we saw in the previous video. Remember Z score formula? We saw that Z score, say to compute the Z score of a particular column here, all right? You want to compute the Z score of this column. You first compute the mean of this column. I will call this as mean mean i, okay, mean mean k, it is mean k. So, we will compute the, compute the mean of this column. So, for each value, so let us come, so this, this is xi, xi minus mean by sigma, the standard deviation. We compute the mean and the standard deviation, subtract by the mean and divide by the standard deviation. This is nothing but the standard standardized score, z score. This is the formula for the z score, is not it? Remember this. This is same here, this is the multivariate version of z-score. From the data point, from x, you are subtracting the mean, which is the, which is m in this case, yeah, and dividing it by the covariance. So, we will take an inverse of the covariance matrix and, multi and take a dot product of this, alright. Again, you take a dot product of x minus m transpose. This is a transpose here, so you, you do not have to, you do not have to take a transpose in this case. So, this is the equivalent. So, you subtract the mean and divide it and divided by the covariance matrix. That is all there is to it. So, that is what this formula, the entire formula represents. Very similar to the z score. This is a multivariate, multivariate equivalent of the z score formula. That is what Maharanabha's distance. Let us now look at the code behind Maharanabha's distance. Unfortunately, there is no direct implementation of direct formula that you can use from either the scikit-learn library or the SkyPy library of any of these libraries to compute Mahalanobis distance. So, let us make one on our own. So, here we are going to use the churn modeling data set. We have, we have seen this in the past, the same data set we are using. So, here in this data set, in the end, towards the end of this data, you will have, towards the end, you have the exited column, which is what we will try to predict, right? We are doing a mini series on building your very first machine learning project. This is part of that sequence only. All right. So, here you want to predict whether a given customer has exited or not and we have various details about each of these customers. We want to know which of these customers are sort of showing an outlier behavior. Yeah. So, this is the data. From this, on this data we are going to apply the Mahalanobis function. So, we are defining the function here. This function, this function is actually implementing the formula that we saw, we saw earlier. So, n x minus m transpose dot product this with the inverse of the covariance matrix do another dot product with x minus x minus m all right this is the formula of d square mahalanobis distance square all right now x minus m so we are computing the mean of the data you need to pass in the particular data point and the entire data set all right both of them are multidimensional multiple columns or features exist in both x as well as the data if you have or assume a covariance matrix beforehand, you can pass in that covariance matrix also here. If it is not passed, we will compute the covariance matrix from this data set. Okay? We will see how to do that here. Okay? So, here first compute the this, this object m. We are computing the mean and from x we are subtracting the mean. So, mean of the data from x from the data that we are, from the, for the data point that we want to compute the distance, from x subtract the mean and store it, this object is called the x minus mu, this is x minus mu, x minus mu, alright. Then if it is not provided, if covariance matrix is not provided, compute the covariance matrix and then take an inverse, inverse of the covariance matrix, alright. So this part is also done, inverse of the covariance matrix is, so I will call this as 1 and this has 2. So, this is this is 1, this is 2 in this formula, right? Inverse of the covariance matrix is computed. So, the left term, this whole thing here is the left term, 
the left term here. Yeah? So, dot product of x minus mu and the inverse covariance matrix is computed here, stored here. Then we compute the dot product of this entire left term and x minus m which is what is happening here, left term and x minus mu transpose. So, we are doing the transpose here in this term because of the way the data is arranged basically. All right. So, this is your Mahalanobis distance or rather the square of the Mahalanobis distance. So, this entire formula is defined. All right. Now, this one we are going to simply apply it on each of the data, each of the rows present in this data set. So, we are not computing the Mahalanobis distance for one single point. So, basically, so you have all the, all, you have a data set, you have a data set and you have, it has a lot of rows here, right. So, here in this call, you are passing both of these objects, both of these objects. So, this data set contains these four columns, all right. We are taking these four columns and forming this data set. Now, here for x itself, x again we are, we are passing the entire data set. Why? Because we are computing the Mahalanobis distance for one point against the entire data. Like that we do the same for all the data points, all the rows in this data against the entire data in one shot. All right. So, the net effect is you will get the Mahalanobis distance for all the rows present in the data that we are storing it in a new column called Mahala. All right. So, a new column will be created that you can see here. Mahala. So, for this column, for, for this particular column, whichever rows or data points are very, very large and very different from the rest of the data, those we can commonly consider as, consider as outliers. So, here if you plot that particular column alone, certain columns, certain records might, might show up. All right. Typically, I will take the cutoff over here looking at this graph. I will take it, take it here. If you want to consider more data points as outliers, you want to see, examine more data points, we can put a cutoff somewhere around here and see how these data points are reacting, right? See what are these data points and then and then take a call where you want to take the cutoff. But generally, those data points are that are very ha having a very, very large Mahalanobis distance value, those are normally considered as outlier records. So, you can, we are extracting this. We are putting a cutoff of uh, 20 here for Mahalanobis distance. Typically, you can take it multiple times of the mean. You can just compute the mean and take a four times of the mean. That, you, that, that also you can take as a cutoff normally and extract the outliers. So, these are the records that are seeming to have a large value. So, if, if you look at this, you can see that most of them are having a very large value of age. I can definitely see that. I can also see some zero balances, some large values of balances. And the credit score is either say it's, it's very large or it's, it's very small also. In certain cases, very small. And some of them are large. Around 850 perfect score, the 850 is the perfect score. So, some of them are large. Now, you can view the outliers if you draw a plot here. So, in this plot, it's, it's not, it's not uh, the, the y-axis is not Mahalanobis distance. These are two features, age against the estimated salary. You can see these are the points that are having a large value of Mahalanobis distance. All right. So, those values that are having large, you can see that they have a very large value of age. Some of these data points are having a very large salary also, estimated salary also. So, that is how we use Mahalanobis distance for outlay detection. In the next one, we will see another interesting, very useful approach, which is nothing but the Cook's distance for outlay detection.